Chapter 2 Second Funnel Some survivor accounts suggest the two forward funnels fell seconds apart. They would have had to have collapsed under the same pressure though as construction was the same. Emily Ryerson. The forward funnels seemed to lean and then she seemed to break in two as if cut with a knife as the bow went under the lights went out. The stern stood up for several minutes black against the stars and then plunged down too. Edward Bean. Not long after this, however, there came the first big explosion, then a moment later the second explosion. This second explosion was the one that did the most damage. It blew away the funnels and tore the big hole in the liner's side. The ship rocked from the explosion as if she was an eggshell. The Titanic careened to one side and passengers making for the boats were spilled into the water. Sydney Daniels. Two of her funnels fell off and after an explosion which I distinctly heard being only a short distance away at the time, she smashed in the middle. Her bow went down and her that her stern which was almost upright when it sank. Testimony of Walter Hurst. The after funnel fell in the sea near me and I was half blinded by soot and water. Then came the raft we had cut adrift. It fell within a dozen feet with me and some men were clinging to it. He most likely meant second funnel as he was near to the funnel and boat be at time of collapse. <coughs> Testimony of Jack Thayer, 1912 interview. I came up facing the ship. I was trying to get away from the ship. I looked back and the second funnel fell in mystery by about 10 yards. This funnel made a tremendous additional watch and suction. I was drawn down again. 1940 interview. The water was over the base of the first funnel, the rumble of all continued. Suddenly the whole superstructure of the ship seemed to split, roll forward to midship and bow or buckle upwards. The second funnel seemed to be lifted up, emitting a cloud of sparks. She was 50 or 60 yards away. His 1912 interview is more reliable than 1940 as he would have remembered be it better in 1912, but in 1940 he wouldn't have remembered it as well due to memory fog. Walter Nicholas testified smoke before top cant. Walter Nicholas. The ship sank slowly and steadily and then we heard a little explosion must have been the first boiler. After that the lights began to go out in different parts of the ship. Then came a big explosion. We could see a mass of black smoke. The boat seemed to lift right up out of water and tilt up on end and then seemed to break and drop back. For one moment she was right up in the air sticking on her nose. Testimony of Charles Lightoller. Only the forward funnel had broken away. I am not sure whether the second one was below water or not. The second funnel was immersed. But I dare say that the stern must have been very well up in the air. It would be in the propellers all visible. Yes, clear of the water. This, that is my impression. Part of the third funnel is visible. As a matter of fact, I am under the impression that the whole of the third funnel is visible. Fayer was the only survivor to mention specifically sparks from second film, but what caused them? Walter Nicholas has well mentioned black smoke which would line up with second funnel. In my theory, the second funnel falls 75 degrees to starboard in my theory. As it falls, guy wires are whip, igniting coal dust causing small reactions of sparks that Fayer testified. Soot is also pouring out of the funnel when it falls. This is of a waterline at 216.55 would have likely been. Water pressure crushes base of funnel causing it to fall near 75 degrees to starboard emitting a small reaction of sparks narrowly missing Jack Thayer. Final simulation.